All right, team, what's going on? My name's Alex. Welcome back to my little corner of the internet. I hope you're doing really, really well today because we've got a fantastic guitar to look at. This is the Harley Benton Fusion 3 EMG HT for hardtail in satin black. This guitar costs £377 at the time of purchase. It now costs a little bit more. It fluctuates up and down, but within a very small kind of price area. Uh, it's made in Indonesia and it comes loaded with high-end features. This guitar is ridiculous for the money that you spend on it. Let's talk through what we get with this guitar. So we've got a Niato body, Naito. Um, I almost... Considering the weight of it, I thought it was ash to start with until I actually checked the spec sheet before uh, starting this video. So, a lovely Nyato body. We've got a Canadian maple roasted neck, and just look how dark that is. Isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful roast? Because what you see sometimes on more affordable models is that it's only a light roast. Um, but uh, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Lovely dark roast there. And then we've got a roasted maple fingerboard as well. Really weirdly, on the um, on the guitar spec sheet, it doesn't list both of them as Canadian roasted maple, so I assume the fingerboard's from somewhere else. Uh, we've got the reverse headstock with the Harley Benton Pro Series logo on in that kind of nice silver there. <laughs> it's so cool. I, I, I really like the design choice that. I'm not a huge fan of upside down headstocks, but with this little mean sort of flick on the end, it looks so cool. Hi, it's Editing Alex here. I forgot to mention, it's also got a Graftech nut. That's wicked! We've got the six locking WSC tuners in black on the headstock. Really, really strong and stable. They feel sturdy. They don't wobble or anything like that. Just really, really good. It's also got a couple of string trees on at the front as well on the headstock, which is nice. So the hardware as well is all great. It's all WSC, I believe. Um, speaking of WSC hardware, we've got the Hipshot style WSC bridge down below. Uh, great, great bridge. Lovely bridge. Speaking of hardware, we've also got the little turny wheel thing here for the truss rod adjustments. And you get a little bar uh, with a guitar that you can pull it backwards and forwards, which is really nice. Uh, we've got 24 frets on a 25 and a half inch scale neck. The radius is 12 inches. Um, I think I think this is a compound fingerboard. I think up here we've got 12 inches. I think up here it's closer to 16 um, or 15.75. They don't advertise it as a compound radius fingerboard, but just looking at it, I don't know if you can see down the neck quite as well as I can here, but this definitely looks like it gets wider. The neck is nice and straight as well, and it's got a lovely little curve in it. Beautiful. Really well set up, actually, out at the factory, too. Um, could do with a string height adjustment and maybe some intonation, but aside from that, it's done pretty well. Um, what else have we got on this wonderful, wonderful guitar? So we've got a volume and a master tone. The tone dial is okay. Nothing to everything kind of fast, but because I'm a rock slash metal player, I usually have it on full anyway. The volume tone there is, is actually really, really good. Um, you know... And the pickups react really well to kind of volume swells too uh, with it. Um, on the back of it, we've got the, uh, uh, it's a bolt-on neck, obviously. Uh, we've got uh, a nice cutaway here so you can get up to the uh, up to the top frets for some good old widdly, widdly, widdly. And, you know, it feels really comfortable that you can kind of rest your hand there. And it's easy to get to the 24th fret. It's really, really convenient to get it like this and just go down the neck and what have you. Um, strap buttons as you do. Uh, the neck pocket cut is perfect. Um, actually, slightly not perfect on my model, but uh, there's a slight chip in it. But at £377, you're not going to complain. The other side is immaculate, though. And that is the only finish blemish that I can find on this guitar. It's superbly well made. Superbly well. And then, of course, what I've not talked about yet the pickups. We've got the EMG Retro Active 70s in this guitar. So these are active pickups. Um, now, you actually find these EMGs in two other types of guitar that Harley Benton produced. The first is the Amarok series. The second 
is the SC Custom Plus. Now, I didn't like those pickups in the SC Custom Plus. I thought they sounded too... Um, I thought they sounded a little bit airy and I didn't think they had much punch to them. And that isn't the case with this guitar, as you're going to hear in a bit with the sound samples. The frets are really nice and rounded off. The neck is super smooth. While we're talking about the neck, something I didn't mention earlier is that we've got fluorescent fret markers down the side. Um, I'm not 100% sure if these are proper lumen lays or not. Um, the, um, there is conflicting evidence to suggest yes or no. They look really good and they do um, they do hold their charge, which is cool. The only the only thing that I would lean towards them not being full luminates uh, is that perhaps the uh, the black bordering around them isn't as perfect as it could be. So you've got the lumen layers there. Uh, we've got the stainless steel frets too. 24 jumbo stainless steel flat uh, flats. 24 stainless steel jumbo frets. Oh, it's also got a a, a three-way switch, uh, no push pull. So you know. There we go. Uh, the satin black finish is super, super smooth. Really, really smooth. It's going to pick up fingerprints, obviously, because it's a satin finish, uh, but nothing a quick wipe down won't fix. I was debating whether or not to buy a Harley Benson Fusion 3 for a while, and even if this guitar hadn't come out, I don't think I would have bought one. Uh, the reason for that is I, I don't like the majority of the colours, uh, the only one I do like is the Trans Red Burst, or the, I think it's the Trans Red Burst, or the uh, f Red Flame Top. It's, um, it, it, look, it looks really nice. It's got the roasted maple neck as well, which I also find really confusing that some of their Fusion 3s have the roasted maple neck and then some of them don't. It doesn't quite sit with me. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Roswell pickups. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the two-point trem that um, the WSC make. And it just wasn't kind of my It looks a little bit too much like a classic guitar rather than something like this that, this that is more of a super strap. So who is this guitar intended for? Obviously, it's intended for the metal player. It's intended for the hard rock guys. It's intended for the, the players who don't seem won over by the, the more classic or... Um, out there because of the Fusion 3s or the Fusion series in general. Um, especially with the addition of the EMG 70s, this is very, very much geared towards a modern rock and metal player. And in the comments on the unboxing video, there's been a lot of discussion about what kind of person this caters to and the kind of guitars it's trying to imitate. First of all, I, th I think there are a number of guitars or brands that this tries to pull influence from. Uh, Solar, certainly with the reverse headstock. I know um, Washburn and a couple of others do them too, so a headstock isn't, reverse headstock isn't something necessarily unique to Solar, but the headstock kind of shape itself, especially with the more aggressive point that the Solar guitars have, that reminds me of the Solar guitars too. Uh, the roasted maple neck, 24 frets, and the shape of the body in general, this is this is Charvel DK24 territory here. It really, really is. And between the two, this is better. This is better than a DK24. At least the Korean one. I've not played one of the Mexican ones in a while. I mean, they're the same price. Uh, so the Korean DK24 is the red one and the, the, with the ash body. This feels better than that. This plays better than that. And... It's those kind of players that this is this is trying to target, the guys who aren't maybe, two, guys and girls or whoever, that maybe isn't bothered about a, uh, a two-point trem, that just want a big old riff machine. I talked about the, the Jim Root influence with the contemporary Telecaster from Squire video that I did a few months back. And this is kind of where this comes into it as well, that this is geared to somebody like, you know, who's a big fan of Jim Root, who's a big fan of... Uh, Gijira, maybe a bit of a sugar, that kind of modern metal outlook, but still wants a relatively classic look. There's also, you know, targeting the market of, and I've completely forgotten his name now, it's the chap from While She Sleeps, I believe it's While She Sleeps, who got the black Charvel with the yellow pickup and the yellow logo on the headstock, very much catering towards that kind of crowd, but for a much more affordable price point. And I'm really, really struggling to see why you would buy a 900 pound Charvel, but you wouldn't buy this instead. One of the things that I found with Harley Benton is that you should always buy 
the most expensive Hardy Benton that you can afford. People need to stop buying the TE20s. They need to stop buying the um, the, the, the entry-level strats. They need to stop buying the CS24 that's like £150. They're decent guitars. They're decent guitars. Do not get me wrong. I'm not saying they're crap because they're not. But Harley Benton shine with models like this. Now, I know you're all really, really excited to hear how this thing sounds. So what I'm going to do is, just like I did with a previous guitar video, because this caters to the modern player, I think we should use some modern technology to record some sounds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug into a VST and Reaper. We're going to use the Crown Amplifier from Audio Assault. It's 10 bucks on sale at the moment. I'll link it in the description. It's usually about 40 and it comes with some preloaded IR packages and uh, some built-in effects as well. It's like 10 bucks, which is fantastic. So we're going to use that into Reaper. We're going to do some clean sounds. We're going to do some overdriven sounds and you're going to hear how this thing roars. And then we'll meet up at the end for some final thoughts. Catch you in a bit. <laughs> Thank you. 
I bought this guitar expecting it to be my backup instrument. I bought this at the same time as I bought the Court G290 Fat 2. And after playing both of them, I am really now not so sure which one my primary guitar is going to be. They're both fantastic guitars. But check out the review for that guitar and then check out the comparison video that I'm going to do. This isn't a backup guitar. This is a gigable, properly serious rock and metal machine. It can be your main instrument. Hell, if I hadn't bought the court, I might have just bought two of these and had them there. Uh, it handles low tuning superbly well. This is currently tuned to D, so everything you've heard is in D. It handles the lead fantastically. It handles rhythm beautifully. Like, the, the EMGs sound absolutely fantastic in this guitar, far better than they did in the SE Custom Plus. There's not a lot more I can say about this guitar except that get one. Try it out. See what you think. Remember that Toman do a 30-day no worries return policy. So you can try it out. If you don't like it, send it back. And then it gets put back into the system as a B-stock so somebody else can get this guitar for an even more affordable price. It's brilliant. For those of you who've managed to get your hands on one, let me know what you think in the comments. For everyone who's thinking about getting one, Take a serious thought about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Alex. This has been my little corner of the internet. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.